I think we're live. Yes, we are. How great is that? I mean, because really, when you start messing with the YouTubes and you do a live hangout, there's no way to know. <laughs> there's no countdown or anything. Google, that would be maybe appreciated to let us know when you're going to throw us in front of the internet. Hey, everybody, some gadget guy here. And uh, some really exciting news this week as new cameras have been announced by Canon and Samsung. We're going to chat out um, optics and imaging and image sensors and mirrorless and SLRs and all that fun stuff for you. And today, I, uh, I'm, I'm lucky to be joined by the illustrious Anabong Etta at from Board at Work. Uh, Anabong, uh, if you would like care to say hello to all the fine people out there in internet land. Hello. <laughs> You're trying to play off my microphone technique right there, aren't you? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You, you learn from the best, right? Come on. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's the thing I still harass Marie with. It's that old Homer Simpson joke of, what if I talk like this? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we should jump right in. Uh, so let's start with the big announcement today coming out of Canon this morning, rocking all our socks off. They, uh, they just announced a new 5 D follow up and and I was actually kind of surprised you know like uh, when the, when the announcement hit that uh, I, I kind of had to think about it for just a sec because uh, yeah it felt like it wasn't that long ago that they announced the 5D Mark III but really it's been yeah. a couple of years so they're kind of getting back on their timetable of of slightly more regular updates not li get, leaving us for years like they did on the 7D to the 7D Mark II uh, the 5D is definitely their baby but two cameras are going to be coming down the pipe the 5DS and the 5DS R, <laughs> and they're both monster 50 megapixel image sensors, dual digit processors, all that fun stuff. I'm gonna pull up a photo, but I was uh, I wanted to get your first impressions on the announcement from Canon. There you I, go. While I, uh... oh, oh, great. Image. You know, give me one second, and I'm gonna pull up uh, just a whole chain of them because I downloaded them all. Sure. Um, I guess I can just go ahead. Um, it's. It's great stuff. I mean, one of the things that um, a lot of things, a lot of things have been missed is because you know smartphone cameras have been getting better and better and better. So we all think that that's the best, um, you know, that's the best camera on the market and that's the best thing to have. But you know, the announcements from you know Samsung yesterday and Canon today really puts the focus at least a little bit back in that shift of like, you know what, this is pure image sensing. And I remember I was reading an article from Ars Technica on this. You know, how they talked about how, you know, this lens really passes a lot of things on the market. And, you know, they threw in the Nokia um, Lumiere uh, 1030. <laughs> 41. I'm like, okay, I get that has a 41 megapixel sensor, but it's totally different. You know, it's not the same beast altogether. But it's nice to see that. I mean, this thing is packed with a whole lot of features. It's 50.6 megapixels. You know, it's got 61 points of autofocus, you know, which uh, yeah, that, that would be a beauty to use. Um, you know, it's just uh, it has everything you need. Um, I don't know what the price is. That's my that's just my own little concern because I'm like, I'm looking at this camera, I'm going, you know, it's the same way I was lusting over the NX1 and I'm like, okay, <laughs> how much will this set me back? Okay, so they did announce pricing for, for these two cameras, and this is actually one of the things that I wanted to ask you about, because this is where I think what I think is interesting about the professional market. So, I mean, everything that you said, absolutely true. Um, we've been getting into this dialogue where phone cameras have obviously decimated the point-and-shoot market, but then we start getting people comparing even high-end smartphone cameras like the 1020 to the imaging sens sensors that come packed into our mirrorless SLRs, our APS-C sensors. So mm -hmm. the 5DS is going to be the sort of lower end of this new camera system. That's going to retail for $3,699. And the 5DSR is going to retail for $3,899. So we got a $200 price difference. And what I think is interesting about that $200 price difference is the 5DSR is the camera that that Canon is going to focus on a sharper image processing system. And mm -hmm. by, by focusing on that system, they're actually removing something from the 5DS. So uh, for those of you who are familiar with cameras, and definitely be dropping us some comments, leaving us some messages, hit the Q&A if you're, if you're following us that way. Uh, just in case I get any of this wrong, because <laughs> I'm a photo fan, but I'm not a professional photographer, um, <laughs> that the 5DSR is going to remove the low-pass image, uh, the, the low-pass filter 
so that you end up with a sharper image out of that 50 megapixel sensor. And this is something that, the, the, very similar to what Nikon did with the D800. There was the D800 and the D800E. And for both of these camera systems, I think it's kind of funny that it's kind of like high performance, hyper exotic cars. You end up paying more for them to remove things from the car. <laughs> And this is kind of what we're doing with, with Canon here with the, the 5DSR. So to get that sharper image, they remove the low-pass uh, low filter, and uh, that should get you a sharper detail uh, on the camera, but you're going to pay more for it to get that properly set up. Um... I'm not a big that, fan. That, that, price, that price just just hurt your heart a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, okay, the the pricing at three thousand, I get it. Um, again, you know, these are professional cameras. This is not the same thing. It's just like the NX uh, NX one is how much? Uh, it's a fifteen hundred dollar camera okay. body. Body exactly. So it's a two thousand dollar two thousand dollar camera. Let's just call it that. You know, because you need stuff. But that's the pricing you get in things that will give you just immaculate images, right? So on that pricing part, I get. That price differentiation between the 5DS and the 5DSR, um, I mean, I, I guess then it becomes situational buying at that point. It depends on what you think you're going to do with your images constantly. If you're constantly looking for that crisp or clear image and maybe, you know, you're thinking, okay, uh, I'm going to be doing these types of shoots for this year, then sure. But then again, I'm going... Are you sure you couldn't just have put that into one package and call it a day? Well, I'm kind of curious to see, and and uh, this is something that I never really got a, a great handle on because I just don't shoot Nikon as much as I, I've shot Canon, and now I'm, I'm shooting almost exclusively on Samsung, is uh, one of the biggest benefits for this is going to be for landscape photographers. So that low-pass filter, what it's actually doing is subtly blurring the uh, the image as it hits the sensor. And so that's to eliminate that, I, I'm, I never say this word right, moiré <laughs> <laughs> imaging. You know, it, it's that, that, that problem that you run into when someone wears a really stripy tie on TV. Yeah. So, you know, you get that really sort of shimmery, colorful effect in, right, on yeah. a tie. And that, that's why people say never wear striped ties if you're going to be on TV. Um, your camera, your SLRs, have a special filter in place to purposely degrade the image quality so that, that those fine lines don't show up as a shimmering, colorful pattern. And Nikon was one of the first to say, well, you know, as our image sensors are resolving way more detail, they actually can do a pretty good job of tracking some of those really tiny little details. So for our 38 megapixel image sensor on the, the D800, we're going to come out with a version that doesn't have this filter in. And it looks like Canon kind of took that to heart because I know at the 5D3 a lot of criticisms were placed on the fact that it was a lower megapixel image sensor. It was only I would think it was only a 22 image, uh, megapixel image sensor or something like that, mm -hmm. and yeah. that the the Nikon was starting to creep into competing with medium format cameras uh, like the Hasselblads and the Mamias and the uh, even like the Pentax. And so it looks like Canon really uh, focused on those criticisms and then just went beast mode. <laughs> it was like, well, they did 38 megapixels. We're going to do 50. And, and, I, and I'm also kind of curious. I mean, like, I, I can't wait to get my hands on one because that pixel density starts to bring us up to cameras like the 7D Mark II, which aren't known for being low-light photography champs. Once you have photo sites that small and that densely packed, yeah. um, I'm curious what that's going to mean for performance. I mean, you know, I think it's one of those things where um, that that level, especially where the the uh, the five D is, I think hopefully we'll see more innovation there where those kind of th problems are addressed because you're not you know you're not, you're not pushing up to a camera like the seven D. You're, you're at that range where you should get some low light, uh, you should get some solid low light uh, productivity from it. Um, like I said, it's it's when we get in our hands and we see it and we start using it, we can definitely tell. But my, like I said, my own thing is I don't see why you can't have both feature sets on one camera. You know, I I, I really don't. I, I don't see a need for having a a, a, a 5D and a 5DR because why can't you? Why can't it be a switchable option? You know. Well, I I think the the actual manufacturing process for the image sensor dictates that. You know, different fil It's actually. It's we're not just talking like software. You know, like how you can have a low pass filter yeah. plug in on audio. Um, that there is actual. There are actual changes happening to the production of the hardware of the image sensor. But I kind of agree that at some point, if we're talking about 
more clarity and we're talking about uh, getting past the problems of lower resolution image sensors creating artifacts and color fringing on things like uh, high contrast and fine lines that one camera eventually starts to make more sense as opposed to having these split uh, split product lines. The uh, Just running down the rest of the specs on the camera, we do have this 50 megapixel image sensor. It's going to, uh, it, this 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 kind of blew my mind. Um, I don't know why, because I know Canon's been doing a really good job with stuff like this in the past, but it's going to have a five frame per second continuous shooting rate, which is insane. Ooh. For a 50 megapixel image sensor continuing to use those digic processors and the, just the size of the mirror that you have, that thwack <laughs> as that thing <laughs> slaps up into the top of the camera, that's, that's pretty impressive, especially for the type of vibration control that you would need so that you don't end up with 50 blurry megapixel <laughs> exactly. images, uh, especially as you start getting into uh, slightly longer exposures. Now, one of the things that I also thought was kind of curious, um, it doesn't look like Canon is going to be changing up their video strategy on their SLRs at all. So even though they invented the product category of shooting video on, uh, on uh, SLR cameras, the 5DS and the 5DSR are still only going to top out at 1080p at 30 frames per second and uh, 720p for 60 frame per second video. There are no other improvements. We're not talking 4K. We're not talking 1080p at 60 frames per second. And I'm wondering if maybe that's not a limitation of the processor on board, that maybe what they're using for their SLRs uh, is purposely split from the image processing hardware that's being packed into cameras like the C300 and the C500. Yeah. Do you know what processor is in there? They say it's the it's a dual digit 6. Uh. I mean, you're right. I was I was a little bummed by that because I'm like, ugh, I mean, you might as well have 4K recording in there. I mean, you just might as well do it. Well, but, and I mean, like, cause but, Sony Sony is doing full frame 4K video on the A7, right? Ah, uh, yeah, I'll do so. So, I mean, for me, it's that was a little bummer. That I mean, that might be something because then that's not. I wouldn't say it's not future-proof because, again, most people who are buying these cameras are still buying it for still photography, you know, and, and taking certain types of shots. So that's, you know, that's that. But then again, if you're looking to expand and do something else different with your camera and, you know, it, it, we know very well that, look, this year we're going to see more 4K TVs, more people are going to buy uh, 4K content is going to be pushed more and more. That you not being not having that ability is, is kind of like a bummer there, you know. Um, I, so it's just one of those things that I saw. I was like, ah. <laughs> like I was like, ah. I, I made that noise because especially I mean, there's so there's so many other cool things like they're going to have. I'm I'm sorry, I'm reading through the uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the actual press release right now. But one of the other cool things that they're going to be coming out with is a time lapse movie setting. Uh, so, I mean, like, when you start building in uh, time-lapse and then also continuous so the, the camera will automatically cycle through video. So yeah. that's another feature. I think that started with the 70D or maybe the 7D Mark II. I can't remember. Um, someone drop us a comment. Correct my ignorance. Um, <laughs> that uh, that when uh, when that feature dropped, it was it was a huge boon because at the time, like, my 7D can only shoot 10 minutes of video, and then it just shuts off. And so then they built in buffers so that it could start up a new video file automatically, but you could have continuous video video shooting. So you see things like that. You see that they're still focused on on delivering a high quality video uh, feature. Sure, but yeah. then as, as I start talking to some of my photography friends, a, a few of them being wedding photographers, they're now starting to get tasked with shooting more video and consumers are starting to care about things like whether or not it's going to be high quality video, yeah, you know, if it's going yeah, to yeah. be 4K video, if it's going to be high frame rate video. They don't they don't necessarily use those terms obviously, but they're talking about if it's going to be a more uh, a higher quality video or if it's going to look good on future TVs, things like you were saying with more 4K displays and monitors coming out. Um, I find it curious that Canon is still sticking to this very uh, old school strategy of the hard division between their SLRs and their cinema cameras that we're not seeing them start to move in between. There's no transition in between those for things like getting a higher quality video or a faster frame rate for, uh, for their, their cameras. It really does look like 
that these two cameras, the 5DS is more of a studio camera, and that mm -hmm. the 5DSR is going to be a landscape photographer's wet dream, and you know, indie filmmakers are running over to the Panasonics, they're running over to the Black Magic. I, I, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt just shot something on the NX1. Yeah. And we're not seeing the same sort of proliferation of, I mean, the, the C300 and the C500 are insanely popular cameras in indie filmmaking, but we're not seeing them can, continue the dominance that the 5D and the 5D Mark II had uh, when we first got video on larger image sensors. Yeah, I, I think I think this just might be a problem with uh, the way Canon has positioned themselves, um, and maybe them not understanding that uh, the the market is becoming less less individualized or less specific, and also just expanding. Because you know, even with the even with the five D, you're getting people who are are prosumers moving up to to those kind of cameras where they're like, okay, I might I want to take my hobby to the next level. I want to. Uh, or maybe even I, I'm mixing my hobby with some work, and you know what? This is a good investment for me because then I can do certain things with it. So I, I think um, it, I think it's just pointing out where Canon is, um, and as a company, not sure exactly where they want to take their product line, or even if they might have to introduce a new product line that kind of re reshapes everything for them because. This is a solid camera. We're not saying we're not saying it's a bad camera. It's a really solid camera, but it just seems like it's it's too specific and also missing just a few things to really make it that like, oh hot damn! Even though it's four thousand <laughs> bucks, I have to buy. It. You know what I mean, like, it really, it, 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 the one thing I got from this camera, and I'm not trying to compare the NX1, is when I saw the NX1 specs and everything, I went. Like that, I was like, "Oh Jesus, man! <laughs> I need two grand like now, you know." And this one, I looked at, it, I'm like, "Oh, this is great," but I mean, like for someone like me, this camera doesn't necessarily work, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's again. To, before anyone chews me out here, I'm saying it's a very, very oh, good chew them out, everyone, chew out Thunder E right now. I, I want to hear your your a your very, best. Very, very good camera. It's also very, it's also specific camera. So. We're saying, I'm saying, you know, if I'm, I'm thinking larger for Canon, if I'm Canon, we need to start making stuff that can apply in a broader range and necessarily, like you said, you know, one's a studio camera, the other one is for, you know, <laughs> landscape photography, wet dream. You know, you can't have that anymore. You got to have a little bit more expansion or at least maybe more product lines that cover all the bases, one of the two. Yeah, so I, 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 I've, I'm ultimately in being, having been uh, an almost lifelong Canon shooter. Um, like I learned uh, to shoot on film uh, Canon cameras back in high school. Uh, I'm always going to be excited about a new new camera body coming out, but this one leaves me with just a few little quirks, just a few little tweaks as to what's coming down the pipe from Canon and what we can expect to see from Canon. And it, and I, I, as as we see the camera, the the high end camera market start to become much more competitive, and as we start to focus on features like video and things like that, um, this is where I get a little nervous. Like you know, my investment in Canon lenses doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be able to transition. And, you know, like, I've stopped using my 7D entirely for shooting video uh, now that I've been shooting on Samsung. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe that's that's the transition because uh, yesterday we got a pretty exciting <laughs> announcement from Samsung uh, regarding their new uh, mirrorless camera. And uh, the rumors seem to have been true that Samsung was working on making an NX1 Mini. And we finally got confirmation on that we are going to be getting the NX500. And uh, actually, you know what? Uh, and I want to hear your thoughts on, on that press release, too. And while you're talking about that, I'm going to fire up some photos of the NX500 so people can see what that's going to look like. Um, the NX500 is... Um... You know, like I had this discussion yesterday with kind of like guys in our tech tech chat. At, oh, another discussion, real quick. So somebody said it, it's the NX1 Mini, and I said no, but that was my first answer. It's like no, <laughs> but uh, it does. I mean, have, it's pretty close though. Yeah, it does have a lot of the guts of the Mini in there. I mean, sorry, sorry, the NX1 in there uh, in terms of um, you know, just like like the the press release calls it the DNA of the NX1. <laughs> you know, and uh, it, it's 
it's pretty solid. I, I I will give you that. Like I haven't tried the NX one, so I you know you have. I think Sam has tried it also, but I haven't. I, I'm just lusty to get my hands on that. But if I can't get my hands on that, this is surely a very good one for me to lust after. Um, you know, it's it's also got UH. It's got UHD time lapse, which I I would like to see how that mm -hmm. that, that is. Which you know is and is one of the features. Where I was I was going through like the feature sets, and I was like, that's going to be interesting there. Um, it's f funny. This one is one that I, I don't think a lot of people do that anymore. But it does um, HDMI and NTSC and PAL. I mean, th that's just like an old school <laughs> like video game, you know. Just because I grew up back home in Nigeria and either had a Super Nintendo that was PAL or Super Nintendo that was NTSC, and the cartridges were completely different. So, <laughs> no game, so. so me seeing that, I'm like, oh, that's cool. Even though it doesn't really affect anybody. Form, so did you so. did you have to did you have to go through that for uh, for like DVD players and stuff? Yeah, we did. Uh, no, except no. Uh, by the time DVDs came, um, we started getting our DVD players from Japan, which were all multi system. Ah, uh, gotcha. And multi system VHS. If you bought if you just bought a VHS that was NTSC, you're like, why, why? Like, <laughs> you, you, know, you know, like, so you needed a multi system. Uh, but anyway, back to this. Um, no, I think it's I think it's really solid. Um, you know, it's one of those things where uh, this is Samsung in true fashion of packing as much as they can. In they are definitely something. in everything in the kitchen sink. Kind yeah, of. I mean, into something this small. I mean, if if you want to run through the, the specs list, you have a whole bunch of features in there. You know, um, even on the connectivity side. You know, I mean, I'm really looking at that. It says quick transfer, email, auto backup, remote viewfinder, a mobile link, photo beam. That's like oh, Jesus Christ. I just <laughs> I just want to transfer my photos. Well, and 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 their 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 comments on this sharing DNA with the NX one. We're talking about the same 28 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. Now, I just put up my review on the NX1. It's a stonking long review. But one of the things that I found really surprising about this camera was with this super dense megapixel image sensor, uh, that backside illuminated sensor really does help make up some of the low light sensitivity you lose from having those smaller photo sites. And so comparing it to output from the 7D and the 7D Mark II, um, it doesn't beat cameras like the 7D Mark II, but it seems to line up very close with cameras like the 7D Mark II while having 40% more dots on that display, um, which is just incredible performance, especially when paired with a, a decent lens. Like I, I've spent almost all my time shooting on actually a fast prime on a 45 millimeter f 1.8. Uh, it, it's, you know, you, you start getting in your head like, oh, well, my Canon with my 50 millimeter f 1.4 is a low light champion. And then I would compare the output with my with the NX1 and this 45 millimeter prime that they've got, and it was just head and shoulders better, sharper, crisper than what I was shooting on my older uh, Canon SLR. Wow. So I mean, when they're saying like the DNA, it really seems like one of the major compromises is going to be burst rate. So yeah. the NX1 can can land a 15 frame per second burst for around a second and a half, and it looks like the NX500 is going to scale that down to a nine frame per second burst. But that still puts it into the territory of most high end uh, APS-C SLRs. I, I don't know of many cameras that shoot faster than that. No, no, I, I, I definitely agree with you there. Um, did, was there any word on pricing? I mean, I'm looking at the press yeah. release that. Uh, and actually, that I put up, I can't remember what the price is. <laughs> I'm going to confirm before, before we go on, but I believe it was $799. So you were able to land the exact same image sensor with the same video capabilities, because I believe it shoots, it, it does shoot H.265, which is a yeah. pain in the rear to work on. No video editors properly support it yet. Um, but uh, do right you, what, what do you use to edit? What? what do you use to edit? What do I set what? So what do you use to edit? Oh, what do I use to edit? I, I bounce back and forth between Sony Vegas and uh, Adobe Premiere. Uh, yeah, and just, if you want to do 265, try PowerDirect. It does support fully. I'll check out PowerDirect. I'm just, you know, I'm oh, old. Or maybe maybe use it. Because what I do is I'll use it as... Um, I, I, do, I do that sometimes. I convert it from one format to another just so that I don't have to, then I can throw it to edit something else. Well, and that's that's what I've been doing. So the footage that I that I have in my reviews, the, uh, the cinema 4K video that I've shot on this, and the uh, I'm going to be shooting some slow motion because this will shoot 120, 120 frame per second 1080p slow motion video. Uh, I, I've just been 
transcoding. So I've been transcoding to another format and then importing from there. And the file size is almost quintuple, <laughs> just to make sure that you don't lose any information. Um, but the, uh, so the, okay, so here it is. The NX500 with a 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens is going to retail for $799. So with a lens, it's half the price of just the NX1 body alone. No, and so yeah. you lose out on a lot of the professional, the, the uh, extra hardware controls, obviously. You lose out on the eyepiece. Uh, you, d you don't get a pop-up flash, but you get the same image sensor. You're going to get l roughly the same image quality, almost uh, the same high-speed uh, still photography, burst rate, and it's going to run half the price with a lens. So that's kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. And uh, I mean, I think the end of the day is just to see what the performance is and what you're getting um, from that. But in all honesty, this is a marvelous steal. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it is, especially if you if you more get get to video and, and just you know you're less on pure photography and more on video. This is probably a very good buy to get because. Um, it, think about it. If you're looking, if you're one in the YouTube space and you're looking at, okay, I want to get a 4K camera. I want to get, uh, I want to improve my equipment. The 4K cameras I recommend, like one is like, you know, this is mine here. This is 2000. Right. Uh, Sony has a different version of this, uh, a newer version, which is like a thousand something. Uh, but that lacks some some of the manual control features on there. But it's the same lens. Um, and then you now have the uh, NX500. You know, I'm saying the other cameras, but I'm saying because now you can actually take better images with this. You know, if you're in that space, that this might actually be a camera that you can go for seven seven ninety nine. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not a bad deal, you know. I mean, we're still not talking an impulse buy yet. <laughs> it's, 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 it's <laughs> I mean, the impulse buy. I mean, I, 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 for for cameras like this, the closest thing to impulse buy would be if you somehow got it on sale for five ninety nine. Buy it. Right. That's when we tell you that. Even this, I would say, yeah, go ahead and buy it because if that's that's your 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 range and stuff there. But uh, I mean, like I said, I like everything I see from it. I know where this fits. I think I I you know if if you kind of compare, I must they're not the same cameras, but the message here is this is this is this really fits the segment properly compared to the Canon where we had just two different things, you know, no, two different cameras that kind of split and doesn't necessarily give you a strong photo or say, okay, I nef definitely need to get, get the uh, kind of 5DS, you know. So... Well, and it's um, interesting seeing both of these companies target rivals. And so I think Canon really took megapixels to heart when the, D8, the, when the Nikon D800 sort of ran away with a lot of the comparison showdowns. Uh, when you went through and watched reviews and comparisons, a lot of people sort of proclaiming the D800 the victor because of all of that extra detail and resolution. So that really seemed to me that that became their target, that their, their target focus. Whereas I think Samsung is starting to look at the popularity of uh, micro four thirds cameras. Yeah. Uh, looking at especially the Panasonics, like the GH4, which has become sort of another one of those indie sweethearts for film and video production. And I think a lot of their, their features, even down into the, some of the consumer features, like I love being able to tap my phone to my NX30 and transfer photos and videos off of the phone. And then on the NX1, you don't even need a phone. You can connect the camera directly to Wi-Fi to punch in an email address on the touchscreen and then have... Samsung's servers automatically email a link for people to download what you shoot. Um, so when you start looking at even those consumer features that I think they're looking at Micro Four Thirds as being their primary competition and then pricing the NX1 uh, opposite maybe a Canon 7D Mark II so you can see sort of the bang for buck features between those two yeah. and then this NX500 is going to step in on a lot of say the uh, like the Olympus Pen series. True, yes. Those, those, those cameras that look a little bit more like old school rangefinder cameras and again we've got a feature set in there that's almost competitive with much higher end or much more expensive cameras like the GH4. Um, I don't know that I would want to use a tiny little rangefinder style camera to do, you know, proper onset film. You know, I, I wouldn't want to shoot a feature film on a camera like that. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, if you wanted to land a really high quality video and maybe you wanted to incorporate that into into a different type of video production or a different type of uh, video project. I could see where footage from that would, would work very well moving into that kind of space. 
Oh yeah, definitely. And I, I, I you're definitely right with the uh, going going against competitors in there, and you know to some degree reactionary, but also just throwing in out features that should should hopefully surpass. But it, it is nice. I think for me, it's you know cameras, the 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 whole photography and video segment needed this because you know a lot of the noise had been lost with you know these bad boys, you know. Mm -hmm. um, been taking a lot of the, you know, noise, say, hey, this can shoot 4K, the camera in front of this can shoot 2K, you know, the front-facing camera, <laughs> and, you know, and the the consumer, you know, especially, you know, I've had friends who are like, okay, hey, I want to take good pictures, I want to get a camera that, yeah, I'll spend like five, six hundred bucks, and I want to buy a camera that, you know, I want to use it for fun, I want to take pictures out, I always go hiking, I do all these different things, and that's how people get into photography hobbies, you know, they, you start taking pictures of the little things, and you, you know, you experiment, you try, but they go, well, my iPhone's pretty good, and my this is pretty good, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, if you said you were starting with a Lumia 1030, I could understand, but even even these cameras, as good as they are, they don't give you that level or degree, you know. It's one of the things I remember with taking the DSLR the first time I did. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was like, I'm just going to mess around with that. I took a photo, I switched settings, I just kept on messing around with the settings and watching how things were changing in terms of depth and, and look and feel, and I'm going... Oh, so this is what photography is all about. This is how I can manipulate a scene to match what I'm thinking in my head. And, you know, the fact that we're getting some of that discussion back with these kind of cameras really goes a long way to say, okay, fine, you can do a lot of things with it. Um, you know, especially especially on the prosumer side with the NX500, that's more of a prosumer camera, you know, and uh, in then moving up to the uh, the 5, 5DSR and the 5DS, um, a little bit more on the professional end where people can say, okay, hey, you know what, I can move up now. You know, there's a difference between 799 and, and 3000, but, you know. <laughs> Almost 4000. <laughs> Sorry, for, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, but it's it's nice to see that there. I mean, I want to see those improvements because you know that also goes a long way in saying, hey, you know, in my mind is as a YouTuber, it's like I want to also have, I want to take very good pictures. So for me, my mind is like, do I ditch this for something like the NX One, you know, to do all my work because I can record solid video and still take better images than this will ever do. You know, or right. do I, or do I even use something like the NX500, or do I go strictly to say even the uh, uh, 5DS, uh, which is you know studio in house. Since I do most of my stuff recording in home, but then I'm limited to only 1080p recording for a three thousand dollar camera or three thousand plus. So, I mean, th there's there's a market for for all these cameras out there, and you know there are different feature sets. What I would like to see from Canon is I want to see something that's a little bit more. Uh, a little more broad range, where they can say, "Here is our," because we're in the market now. Is here's our killer device. Everybody wants that. Everybody yeah. wants that. Like, boom, you know, you drop the mic. That's it. Now you're waiting for your competitors to respond. And hopefully, we see a little bit more from that from them. With whether it's and, one camera or a range of cameras. Well, and especially just from from Canon helping usher in this era, I, I would I would hope to see some more tech forward features. Like, I don't see why. The 6D has Wi-Fi built into it, but the 5D does not, which means it's going to require a fairly expensive battery grip just to add a feature that is pretty easy to build into a number of devices. I mean, like, watches have cell phone <laughs> radios built into them. Why does my top-of-the-line full-frame SLR not um, have Wi-Fi? Where's, where's Canon it? from again? I know the Japanese are very conservative and they're yeah, very that's... old world tech companies and Sony went through similar stuff. But, you know, that's actually a perfect example where Sony with their A-line is is doing a, a remarkably good job of mm -hmm. addressing some of those high tech uh, solutions in a very old world market. In the camera market, those A7s are absolutely crushing uh, some, some really impressive features, NFC, Wi-Fi, tap and pair, tap and share. Uh, cell phone connectivity. I mean, it's 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 like we're seeing Sony. It's the Sony camera di division is a completely different division from the rest of Sony. <laughs> I, know, I, I think I think that division is either based in Korea or the U.S. None of because they're hungry. I mean, like like Sony looks like they're ready for a fight. Canon, I think Canon and Nikon, as they dominate, what they probably still represent ninety percent of the standalone camera market. 
Um, I, I don't see that that urgency. I don't see uh, that that hunger because they have such momentum built into the insane number of people that own Canon and Nikon lenses yeah. that they don't. I, I don't see them moving forward on things like that. And and it, you, this is going to be silly, but one of the reasons why I actually switched over to the NX30 over my 7D was simply power management. That mm -hmm. my my 7D, I have three batteries and two chargers constantly cycling through those batteries and chargers, and my NX30 lasted an entire week at CES on a U on a standalone power bank, and all I had to do was plug a USB cable in, and the battery charged through this power bank that I had, that one of my RAV powers, and it was so much more convenient than hauling multiple heavy, lumpy little batteries around. And yeah. so, like, features like that are, are in, I mean, it's, it's crazy to me now that I've started shooting on other cameras that I haven't had stuff like this for my 7D. My 7D has a $150 adapter just so I can power it directly off of an AC power cord. This has a $5 USB cable. <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> you know, so so it's those kinds of things that I really hope to see. But but going back to one of your other points, real quick, before we wrap up this video, I, the thing that I am always really excited about is uh, whenever we see. I'm trying not to drop my NX30. I'm just going to hold it in my lap. Um, <laughs> is, uh, my, my desk is so trash right now. Uh, one of the things I'm always really excited to see, and, and especially what you were talking about, is is a conversation where our smartphones are good enough to tackle most of the basics. You know, you want a snapshot, you want a little pic with friends, you, you won't even want some decent looking video, you're, you're at, I mean, like, go to a concert, go to a, a, a child's school play, and you're going to see a sea of glowing rectangles in front of you as most people are watching uh, a piece of, uh, a, a live event through the, the screen on their phones. And, and the reason for that is because these tools have actually gotten pretty good, and that's why the point-and-shoot market has been decimated the way it has. But when we step up to uh, a standalone, interchangeable lens, larger image sensor, uh, we start talking about studio grade and uh, cinema grade experiences, it's always really exciting for me to have that conversation because I like having a standalone piece of equipment that's not going to beep at me, that's not going to ring, it's not going to take a phone call in the middle of me shooting a video. I just get to focus on capturing the best image that I can or shooting the best video that I can. And uh, that, that to me is as long as we still have that tier of the market and, and we started off at some a fairly reasonable price points, um, that's where I want to see that competition. And as we climb up into cameras like the 5D2, I mean the 5DS and the 5DR, um, we also will probably start having a conversation soon about moving into almost IMAX style photography as more medium format camera sensors start shooting video. So, I mean, even uh, Pentax has their 645DZ, I think it's called, and and it's not great yet, but it can shoot video off of an image sensor that's twice the size of the 35mm full frame uh, sensor. So that's definitely something that I hope to see more of, because I think that'll also usher in a new era of filmmaking when you can double, I mean, it's just what it does to your depth of field, what it does to the to the frame is is just sort of a wonderful, soft uh, image. So uh, that kind of stuff I'm really excited to see too. But I really want to get your thoughts from, because uh, we've had a number of people viewing. We didn't get any uh, questions in the Q&A, so um, I guess uh, I'll just have to field it with regular YouTube comments later on. But definitely drop us some comments down below if you've been shopping a new camera, if you've been looking for something to shoot video. Uh, I mean, between Anabong and I, I mean, you probably won't find many more... Uh, you, you probably won't find a better collection of smartphone video <laughs> samples <laughs> between the two of us. Uh, I think we've covered everything uh, over the last three years. Yeah, um, it's on the market. And oh, no, I, definitely, I definitely agree with you there. I think, see, I, I, I'm with you in that uh, idea of the delineation, you know, from the top down because, you know, as we get, you know, as, as we move from, say, you know, if we're getting IMAX quality you know, type sensors on, you know, on, on a small compact body, which means also some of those features as we move down to even these bad boys. I'm not saying that this will ever shoot an IMAX photo <laughs> video, but I'm saying that you're going to get something that comes down because that's what happens with technology delineation. And it's good for everyone because, you know, I, I used to be one of those in the camp where I was like, I didn't need a point of shoot. I was like, oh, I had a good 
uh, camera. And then when I started using better cameras myself, and I, I started using DSLRs like pretty late, you know, late in life. I was one of those. But, you know, I, I grabbed the friends, I started using it, and I was like, ah, oh, crap, like, what have I been doing? Or where have I been? <laughs> I, I, love, I love taking photos. I like photos, you know. And, you know, when you see, when you see the, uh, the detail, in it, especially when you see the detail later, you know, I think that's one of the things that we miss with photos. You know, you it, this is my this is almost like my case study for everyone. Whoever is watching this, go back and look at your Facebook photos. Not from this year, not from even last year, from like two or three years ago. If you have those, just go back and just try and enjoy the detail in the photos and see how much detail you're getting. Because most of those are from your smartphones. I, I can guarantee. You. And anyone you've taken at a wedding or anything professional like that, look at those and compare. You know, and just see what you're getting from that because, you know, there's, there's one thing, especially when you look at wedding photography, right, and you see the couple or you see, like, the bridesmaids, but everything feels so alive yeah. in those. Even in the black and white shots, you know, they still look vibrant because you can see, you can see, like, you know, the flowers popping in the back. You can see the paint from the walls. You can really feel it because you're looking at, it's almost close, the closest thing to live imagery. That your eyes are perceiving, even though it's probably even not as vibrant as that when you saw it. Maybe you have bad eyes. I don't know. Say, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying that basically, that's 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 my own question to you. Or that's my own task to you. Is like go back and check out your old photos and see and just look at them, see how vibrant they actually pop out. You'd be surprised that not a lot because we're taking them with smartphones and you know um, we don't get that level of photo intimacy. That's what I'll call it, you know, where um, you you really relieve and capture that moment again and go, yeah, yeah, that's that's really, you know, that was really, you know, really cool moment in time altogether. So that's that's my own little two cents. So I, you know, um, just so that we can uh, we can start wrapping this video up, I, I definitely want to hear your thoughts. Uh, definitely drop us some comments down below. What are you thinking about the uh, the new Canon 5DS, 5DR? Do you shoot Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, Olympus? Are are you uh, are you camera whore like I am? Um, drop us some comments down below, and also uh, what you might be thinking about with Samsung entering this uh, not entering this market. They've been here for a little while, but then continuing to put pressure on this market with uh, the NX500, the NX1, and trying to step up APS-C camera sensors. Uh, definitely drop us your thoughts. I want to know what you think about all this fun stuff. And uh, be sure to check out Anabong's channel, Bored at Work. He's bored at work on Twitter. He's bored at work on Google+. You can find him on the Facebooks and on the YouTubes. And uh, and again, like I said, between the two of us, uh, you're going to find a ton of uh, smartphone and camera samples just from some of our favorite manufacturers. Uh, Anabong, do you have anything coming down the pipe that people should be on the lookout for? Um, I'm about to drop my review of the Leviathan from uh, Razer. It's a soundbar. It's a gaming soundbar. It's actually pretty small. It's on my desk. And um, <laughs> and um, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even have it here. But I got a, a phone from Blue, which is very interesting. It's got a 5,000 milliamp battery in there on the phone. And it should last you for days. But the other cool thing the phone does is it allows you to charge other devices from that phone. It's got a reversible U, uh, USB cord that comes with it, and you can charge your Galaxy Note 4. Oh, <laughs> so you can use your blue phone to charge your other nicer phone. <laughs> you can exactly. <laughs> you can charge your phone or tablet. It will it will charge it, and so I want to check that out and see how, like how long that battery will last, and also some of the charging features, which was, was actually great because I was doing the unboxing yesterday and I was like, oh, let me check it out. And I looked at my Galaxy Note 4, I was like, oh, 20%. Oh, great. All right, cool. Let's continue the unboxing and it will charge it. <laughs> so, yeah, those, those are a couple of things I have coming down the pipeline this, uh, this week. And then uh, also Saturdays we do a tech hangout, the weekly, and uh, that's uh, at 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. Which is or eleven thirty a.m. Standard time for, for uh, the rest of the world. Apparently, that's that's an acceptable time to wake up on a Saturday I, morning. I, I mean, I mean, we could see. Okay, I I think we should put it out this week. If you're gonna join, let us know what's the best time for you on Saturday. Maybe you might help Juan here with having a later. <laughs> no, time. they're gonna make it even worse. You're like, I would prefer seven a.m. <laughs> But you know, one of the things I was thinking about, and maybe this is something we can talk about later, and 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 again, because I want to see some comments from you folks I, of starting up our own photo challenge. 
So if you've got a smartphone, if you've got an action camera, if you've got an SLR, uh, maybe we should try and start doing our own weekly uh, photo challenge with all the people that participate on the weekly, and then maybe starting our own little group on Google Plus or Facebook or something like that to that's, share the results. That's not a bad idea. That, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll try not to doctor my images in any form or fashion. <laughs> well, and that could be one of the challenges is, is <laughs> <laughs> what's the best editing that you can do? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for, for my channel coming out, just this morning, we uh, I uh, released my full video review. I've had this for about a month now of the Samsung NX1, just this monster camera. It's a huge review, uh, but I go through a full tour of everything on the camera and uh, so a lot of image, uh, image samples and then uh, high ISO shots, high ISO video shots. So uh, you can definitely check that out on this channel. Uh, along with the cinema 4K video samples, you can actually see the cinema 4K video from this from this camera. I've got a whole separate video just for that. And then uh, I'm wrapping up a week of smartwatches, so I've done a ton of reviews on Android Wear and the Qualcomm Talk and the Pebble, and so all of those are out on this channel now too. Uh, I, I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, definitely check out Anabong's uh, Anabong's uh, various channels across social media. Like I said, uh, Bored at Work. Uh, you can find him pretty much all over the internet. His Bored at Work. I, of course, am some gadget guy. I want to thank Anabong for joining us, and I want to thank you all for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe for both of our channels to catch more fantastic tech chat and uh, photography chat and video chat across all of our various uh, endeavors. And then uh, I also, uh, I can't pr continue producing videos and reviews on this channel. If you folks aren't out there sharing uh, what we produce, it really helps us just kind of help spread the conversation, bring more cool people to the party. So hit that thumbs up button, and we will catch you all on the next Hangout. Peace.